You're listening to Twalkhammer Entertainment's The Ban Hammer Podcast. This episode of The Ban Hammer is being recorded on Sunday, April 21st, 2013. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Band Hammer. This is the Band Hammer Live. I don't know if you guys just heard the intro or not because uh, it didn't play in my ears. So I don't know if it's uh, still playing or not. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it either. <laughs> Hi. Oh, well. Mix it in. Yep. We're hopefully editing for you. It's, uh, hopefully it's there and everybody got to hear it because it's awesome. It's it's just awesome, right? Everybody Plus the intro song. No. Um, so, I'm your host, Sam, and uh, joining me today, we got uh, Road. What up, Road? Yeah, good afternoon. I almost said good morning. Where am I? I don't know anymore. And Dan's here. Dan. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and JJ's here. What's up, JJ? I finally put on pants. Oh. I like pants. Pants are overrated. Solomon Grundy want pants too. What? It's an old thing from Adult Swim with the, the Justice League. Ah, yeah. uh, indeed. I, I I followed who uh, Solomon Grundy was, so that's right, cool. right, right, right. Uh, it's DC. Anyway, no one cares. If you want to learn more information about this podcast and the podcast, the other podcasts we we record, check us out at www.twoncamera.com. One of our many social sites, twitter.com slash twoncamera, facebook.com slash twoncamera, youtube.com slash twoncamera, ENT. We're also on Google+. Plus. I don't know the freaking address for that one because it's weird. Rate, hate, and subscribe on iTunes. Thank you to those of you who do that. We are also on Stitcher. If you are listening to us on Stitcher, what up? And uh, I think that is all. Did I miss anything? I feel like I'm missing something there. Mm, YouTube? I did that one. You did that one? I don't know. Sounded good to me. Me too. Thank you. Uh, what we play this week? Starting off with JJ, you've been playing anything? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I have been playing Guild Wars 2 again. And I'm, oh, really? I'm anxiously awaiting the 30th of April because that's when Neverwinter opens up. You're going to play that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to play the crap out of it because of the Foundry. Because you get to make your own dungeons and adventures and everyone else gets to play it. and I love that. I like that idea on a take of uh, MMO. I like. I think that's, uh, that's cool that mm -hmm. you can create your own world, so to speak. And what, what's, what's great about it, what's additionally great about it is it scales. So if you're like, I'm bored, but I don't want to like mess up my, I want to play a different class, but I've already done the beginning area, you can just like make another class and just do player-created content. Right. Good, 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 good. Uh, Dan. <laughs> Games, what are those? Yeah, I hear you, man. You didn't play anything? I didn't Nothing? play anything. You know, Cody. Um, I've been getting the baby's room ready, so I haven't really been I've had any time to do anything at all, whatsoever. Ever. At all. So, uh, some Battlefield maybe this week. That's about it for me, a little bit in the beginning of the week, and that was all. Uh, so, last week, moving right along. Last week, I am here, sir. What? He forgot Road. Oh, Road, what'd you play? Did I, I thought I asked you. I know what you missed me. I guess I started with JJ, that's why. Okay, go yeah, ahead. What did you, you play this week? Uh, Sunday, right after we recorded the last week, I played a little bit of Dark Souls, which is absolutely hysterical in the onion suit. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Yes. Played a little bit of uh, Don't Starve at the beginning of the week. Played. Uh, I bought and played the Dishonored DLC Knife of Dunwall. And if anyone's having any reservations about buying that, don't. It was worth the ten bucks. So that's it. all it was. Yep, it's only ten bucks. Of oh, course, it's chapter one, and I think like a two-part story. The next uh, DLC will probably also be ten, and that'll wrap up the story. Um, you actually play as a whole different person. Who? Um, spoiler, but you meet them in the full game. You'll know who it is. So there you go. That's not a spoiler. That's a hint. Uh, yeah, I didn't say. It's not a spoiler. Not a spoiler. Anyway. Um, the Old Republic McKevick's Mansion released this week. 
it officially released this week. It actually uh, really came out for pre-order people last week. But I've since I've been on vacation this week, I have played the hell out of that. Uh, a couple days ago, I bought Kingdoms of Amalur. Uh, you know, a bit late jumping on that ship, and I really regret it because the game is freaking awesome. Kingdoms of Amalur. Amalur. Yes. Yes. Three eight studios yeah. game. Yeah, it no, was the, it was the game that <clears throat> the problem is it was designed to be an MMO and then they yanked no, the was, MMO no, out. No, it was not. It was not designed to be an MMO. You're thinking of Reckoning, aren't you? No. Yeah. Well, that, that is. It's Reckoning. I'm, is... Thinking of, I'm thinking of Kingdoms Amalar because when they approached um, R.A. Salvatore for it, he created the world. They're like, we're going to make this an MMO. They're like, mm, no, let's not. But it still feels like an MMO. Like it's so much back and forth grindy quests that I was just like, really, this is a single player RPG. Get grindy quests out of this crap. Eh, I don't hey, mind it. I think it's fun. I will have. I will have to disagree. It wasn't designed to be an MMO. And the MMO upcoming was. Uh, it was uh, Copernicus, uh, and that was a whole different thing. Amalar oh, was kind of what I what, remember. Amalar, okay. yeah, this was, is the one. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. gotcha. So, anyway, I, I finally jumped on board with that. Twenty bucks on Origin, absolutely worth it. Um, played some Battlefield oh, Three as usual, and uh, Anomaly Two. I I bought that game. I finally went and downloaded it, and I played a little bit of it. More people need to be online playing this so I can test the damn online gameplay. <laughs> Which game Here is this? Anomaly 2. Love and Bits oh. Studios. Secret game, quote-unquote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I went and checked. There is nothing NDA related with that, so I can talk about that all I want. <laughs> I know you had reservations about that earlier this week. I never signed any NDA. The game is mine to play because I paid for it. It's just still in testing. I got you. So, yeah. You want to whine hmm. about it some more? No, I don't. I'm just stating a point that I'm awesome, you're not. Moving on. That's pretty much it. If there was more, that wouldn't surprise me. I've had an entire week to do nothing but play games. That'd be lazy and gain weight. Gotcha. It's awesome. It's been a great Nothing wrong with that. It's, yeah. Well, you had vacation, and yes, you can eat my. It's a good thing. Anal. That's not very appetizing at all. Well, it's not. So now, can I move on? Sure, maybe. Fine, right. you have Fine. permission. Thank you. So anyway, so last week we sat down and we talked with uh, Dave Belcher of Forsaken Studios about Embers of Karis. Uh So we didn't get the great interviews. interview. Yes, it was an awesome interview, so if you haven't checked it out, you can go to TwanCamera.com or iTunes, wherever you want to find it, you can get it there. Excuse me. And uh, moving on, we're going to just talk about nothing but gaming news this week because there's a ton of information that we haven't touched on in two weeks, plus a bunch of like other stuff that's going on. Um, no, I'm not hearing a high-pitched noise, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> that was like 20 minutes ago. Oh, was it really? <laughs> you look at the timestamp. Oh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, Road, you you get the lead gaming news. Oh, do I? Awesome. You're, you're the one that brings it all, writes it all down. Yeah, because I'm the only one's gonna do it. Damn it. Well, <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna get a baby's room ready, you can come right on up here, man. Again. If you're willing to give me another week off of work with my actual job and you're going to pay me, how about, how about I'll this? absolutely do it. How about this? How about this? I will put you and your wife up for a week. That's, uh, that actually sounds yeah. Of course, I'd probably lose my job in that week. <laughs> <laughs> Which may yeah. not be a bad thing. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Get ready because I'm immediately going to turn this back over to you um, okay. after this one topic. Okay. <laughs> First up in gaming news, inventing a skyscraper console. How a professor is bringing Pong to Philadelphia Sierra Center or Sierra Kira Center. I don't know. You know what's awesome? I was listening to the radio this week while I was driving to work at the ass crack of dawn, and they were uh, they were actually using this. They were actually playing Pong. Really? But the, the so cool this thing is already going. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's already going. Uh, Nick McElwain from the Preston and Steve show. You can go check them out at PrestonandSteve.com. They, um, Nick McElwain was down, uh, with the professor who's doing this. I'm sorry, I don't know the professor's name off the top of my head. Road. 
No. Okay. You keep on going. I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, Frank they were, Lee. There we go. What is it? Frank Lee. Yes, Frank Lee. So they were actually already playing Pong, and it's like completely live going, you know, when they're playing it. But the game or the the setup doesn't just have just Pong. They got like Pong, Space Invaders, um, a bunch of old school, you know, games that they were playing. And they were doing uh, a little contest on, on the show this weekend when they were actually playing it. So that was cool. I think that's really cool. I believe that if you go to uh, PrestonandSteve.com, they have a video somewhere in their site of the uh of them actually playing pong so that's great love that see uh, that's why i turned it back over to you oh okay see yeah see? i knew okay. you'd have something there we go philadelphia exactly all right anyone else no silence move on okay moving it on PBS video explores whether uh buying call of duty is a moral choice <laughs> really now before uh, you, you think too much on that, it's mm -hmm. not exactly what you think it is. It's more of th there's actually a video that goes with the video that goes with this. Um, I would say is absolutely worth watching if you've got the time. After the cast, not right now. Don't do, don't it, right. do it now. Don't do it now. Of course, you don't have the link, but you could Google it. Um, it. It basically goes on to how realistic guns are in video games, and just kind of like it actually made me think. Like I'm a gun supporter. You know, I'm also a video game supporter, clearly. And this guy is not so much a gun supporter. But he does give some interesting points on how a lot of the guns used in video games are built in an ultra-realistic sense. How they sound the same, how they, the recoil is the same, how they function the same, the mechanics that work, they operate the guns, all the same as real guns. And how some people really can't tell the difference. You know, there's, he plays, like, he does not personally own guns. He doesn't support people owning guns, which I disagree with. But. <laughs> <laughs> How many times are you going to reiterate that? I'm making a point here. Okay, He got ahead. to make his point, I'm All making right. mine. All right. Sorry, go ahead. So, but he does <laughs> uh, talk about how he enjoys playing violent video games. Mm -hmm. And how it is a great way to release stress for him. Is, you know, he likes violent video games. That's he doesn't actually do. own the game, guns. But he likes playing with them in games. And there was actually, uh, related to this, there was an interview with some uh, Battlefield 4 pe uh, related people. Um, which I didn't really ever think about, but Battlefield is made by a Swedish company. Mm -hmm. Sweden is like an ultra-pacifist country. Mm -hmm. And these guys are making one of the most badass, realistic war sim games in the market. I, I can I can get behind that. Okay, go ahead. But they uh, they one of the um points they made is they're, you know, the people that play these games aren't warmongers. They're just they want the fiction and the drama of war. So I guess, I guess this is where you can kind of throw Tom in the same situation. Yeah, Tom, exactly. Tom Tom is against guns, and he's not here to defend himself. But we're going to throw him under the bus anyway. So Tom doesn't like guns. However. He enjoys on the weekends going and doing airsoft. Right. And if you guys don't know about airsoft, airsoft uses realistic looking guns. I mean, the guns AR 15s, M 16s, uh, P 90s, bull pups, you know, the same with, with the handguns. I mean, they're not super accurate, but they are accurate at the same time. Um, they shoot little rubber pellets out of them. You know, he likes to do that. I mean, we we over here in the states, I I would say a lot of people are more into paintballing than uh, airsoft because you know airsoft is the honor system. You know, oh you shot me, yeah, or or, or I just shot you. Oh no, you didn't. You missed completely. And well, people in America are much quicker to call bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> when you were. It's like when you were little kid. It's like when you were a little kid. You're like pew pew pew. I shot you. No, I didn't. I had my force field up. No, screw you, Jimmy. You didn't have a force field up. I did too. <laughs> You didn't call the Ford Field before we started the game. I was touching the chair that's home base. That doesn't count. <laughs> I tell him, Mom. Uh, Mom, I shot Jimmy, and Jimmy says he has a shield, but he can't have a shield because he didn't say so before him. Mom's like, just shut up and eat the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not projecting my childhood or anything here. Have some cookies. 
Um, but yeah, but you know, just going along with with like the way that Tom is. I mean, Tom's the same way, but he likes to do it in a real sense as opposed to, you know, going out and shooting actual guns. Where me, I'd go shoot a gun if I, you know, when right. I want to. He understands it's it's entertainment. It's something you can do, but it's not reflective of actual gun violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So it, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah, I like where you actually took that and really think about that angle. See, See? but anyway, See? go look this up. You know, we'll obviously have it in the show notes, but uh, check out this video. It'll make you think. I don't agree with him, but it'll make you think. I can tell you. I can tell you that buying Call of Duty is a moral choice. Oh, yeah, it definitely you know, is. You know, when you're the actual <laughs> article, yeah, yeah. No, no. Definitely when is. you're when you're at the store and you're holding that game case in your hand, you have to make the moral choice: Am I a twelve-year-old little boy or not? <laughs> uh, I'm he trying just to get away from that, but it was, no, no. It was, I like I like where he went with it. That's good. I like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Lotus, Lotus. I wanted to point out Lotus in the chat brought up a, a good point. It's like LARP. What Tom yeah. does is like LARP. Yeah, with guns. Magic they missile. Put... Magic missile. Magic <laughs> missile. Uh, all right. Lightning since we're going this direction, since we're going this direction, I actually yeah. back in the day used to do oh. mini combat reenactment. Uh. <laughs> we used. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The uh, the group. You know, there are obviously those people that are like magic missile. I didn't do that kind of thing. Yeah. What we did was that's, an actual like physical. It was it was basically the uh, the paintball version of air of like what, airsoft. What is it, what's it called? That's where you guys use like boffer weapons and stuff. Uh, Belagarf, I think it was what yeah. I used to play with. Where we used foam weapons that felt like two by fours and yep. never walked away without limping. And you always have that, and you always have that one dude who takes it way too serious, and he's like six foot four and four hundred pounds, and he just wails on the tiny kids. I, I actually, you, you say that, but I had a buddy who I uh, brought with us one day, and uh, he was six foot four, two hundred and sixty pounds of pure muscle. Oh god! And he was able to use the two handed weapon in one hand. Well, yeah, so he was he, dual wielding yeah, he, great he swords. Took the he took the monkey grip feet. <laughs> exactly. And he, he hit one guy and took him right off the ground and mm. threw him a little ways. <laughs> okay. I've, I've got you beat Instant on the... Instant kill! I've got you beat on the loser LARP scale, and I can't believe I'm admitting this, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it anyway. About ten years ago, I used <laughs> yeah. to do Vampire the Masquerade LARP. Oh, oh which, God! Which has no... <laughs> There's no combat at all. Literally, how you do combat is you throw rock, paper, scissors, and you're like, all right, uh, my guy is trying to put you to sleep. Turn your back. One, two, three. All right, scissor beats paper, but I got two extra traits, so I can do a reroll if I want. Or if you want to listen in on people's conversation, you fold your hands across your chest like you're doing, like, you know, like you're laying in a coffin or whatever. And that means you're obfuscated. And. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say, oh, "Wow, <laughs> wow, yeah, Dan, just, Dan, I'm, right, I'm so glad that I've never hit that uh, that level of nerd." <laughs> to, so be fair, to be fair, to be fair though, so I didn't. Much. To be fair though, like I'd never done it before. My friends like, "You got to join us." I'm like, "Well, I don't want to take it seriously." And they're like, "Well, you can play the crazy." There's like a clan of vampires that are crazy. So I pretty much made the Joker. So I was like the asshole, and I was. I was partially drunk half the time I was there at LARP, and I was just <laughs> just being me. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Oh my god! Like, we used to have. Uh... Now let me let me get let me let me put this out there because there there are I I don't want to offend all the LARPers out in the world, but uh, Road, you yeah. were the like one of the hardcore kind of LARP groups, right? So you you actually used like stuff to beat the crap out of each other with. Uh, it, ours was more of a sport than it was LARPing, and yeah, yeah people walk, you always got injured, always. So, I, I know there's people out there that actually do that, okay? So, I, I'm not trash talking anyone, but, you know, that and that's cool, if, that, if that's what you want to do, I think that's great, you know, it, it's a different, a whole different world, like, type of social reaction, you know, uh, and it gets and it gets us us nerds. It's, it's one thing that gets us one nerds outside. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> I'm not sitting here behind my computer. But um, so yeah, we used right. to have right. here, here's a here's a little story for you. We used to have this guy at, up at college who uh, was a who did LARPing, and you know, we had these these two hardcore nerds, and myself and Moscow uh, uh, used to 
run a little D and D group with these guys. So it was uh, Musco was the DM. It was me. Uh, there was this other guy uh, who was the, I, who I would consider kind of quote unquote the normal people. And then we had these like two extremely uber 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 nerds. Right. One guy lived across the street from me. His name was uh, Brian. Okay. So, <clears throat> which was weird because he, he was this ugly, dirty, dirty, dirty guy. I mean, like disgusting. But he, he was had this. Ex- a peasant man. Get over it. He was. He had this extremely hot. I mean, drop dead gorgeous sister. It was. It was really weird because this guy was <laughs> disgusting. So. I, so and any time you would mention like mention that to him, like, like Brian, how is it possible that your sister is so gorgeous and you just got the frap end of the gene pool? He would get so pissed off. Anyway, so because they were all used on her and there was no <laughs> genes left for him. <laughs> He's the older one. Well, they 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 knew <laughs> they were saving up. Or, yeah. I don't know. So the one time I get up, uh, I had to get up for work early one like Saturday morning. It was probably, I would say probably about 4 o'clock in the morning. It was uh, like right right beginning of spring. It was still, you know, still dark outside. I go out my front door to start up my car, you know, get it ready to go. Uh, still still kind of chilly in springtime up here in Pennsylvania. So I go outside, start up the car, and I look over, just, you know, because you walk out half dead anyway. So I walk out of the house, don't notice anything, get the car started up. I look over, and there's Brian outside with full LARP gear on, swinging his sword around, his LARP sword, just, you know, like, practicing how to, you know, swing and doing different attacks with it. I look at him and I'm like, Brian, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, it is 4 o'clock in the morning and you're out here swinging around your sword. Oh, my God. I guess I guess it's one of those things that if you don't know how, how Brian looked, it, it's not as funny. See that? I wasted a story. Was, story was he, wasted. Was he like? Was he like Brian, or was he like Brian, the guy who just crossed the street from you? That one, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the the thick uh, Coke bottle glasses, the hey. long oiled hair. You know? Oh my god! Well, I don't have you, hair anymore, so it's all right. You know what I'm talking about? You guys, yeah. everybody out there knows knows one. Uh, all right, Road. Let's get on. Moving on. All right. Let's take this to a less funny side. Um, Atari closes test drive unlimited developer Eden Games. I I wonder if that shuts down the 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 servers as well. Not that I played uh, test drive I, unlimited. But I understand they are also closing down the game. But wow. don't remember where I read that. It's kind of sad. Yeah, I don't think that's going to. Are, are we just going to hit a bunch of like sad ones and it gets yeah. some good ones? Yeah, might as well just you might as well just list all the companies, right? I mean, there's a huge bunch of layoffs. You might as well just list them all right now. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. What can we say? Uh, next story: EA shuts down Montreal mobile office, followed by EA lays off, uh, layoffs spread across the UK and India. Slant Six Games rolls out temporary quote unquote layoffs again. Game Dev- Game Developer Magazine shutters layoffs at Game uh, Gama Sutra. And I thought there was another layoffs. one. I might have got rid Wait, of it. Oh, here, here's another one I want to make sure we touch on. So we do, since we mentioned EA, EA is shutting down SimCity, uh, The Sims, and a couple other Facebook games as well. That's the one I was thinking. Um, well, that's it's right there because it's EA shuts down Montreal Mobile Office, and that tied into their Facebook stuff. Oh, is that where that was? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. There you go. Well, there's that. <clears throat> So a bunch of game devs and game related uh, people lost their jobs again. Uh, honestly, at this point, it's just one of those. It's just one show. of those industries where it's going to happen. You know, it's such yeah. a fluctuating industry that layoffs are, are are bound to happen. They know. I mean, that's why you see so many people who are like, "Yeah, I used to work on this company, and now I work for this company, but I've also worked for this and this and this company," just because it happens. Well, there was a there was an article released. Uh, it was either last week or the week before by. I think he was the co-GM of Bioware Austin at one point, and he's also been uh, in production relations with several other gaming studios. But he, um, his article that he put out was basically saying that game development studios, or like the bigger companies like EA, Activision, so on and so forth, look at game developers as just meat sacks that can be easily replaced. All right, so here's, here's, here's my thing. 
I've been saving this rant up for a, for a couple weeks now, and I think it's time that we uh, we bring this up. <laughs> all right. So once upon a time, all these game companies that are out there could be considered quote unquote indie developers, correct? Yes. You all can agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. To the standard of what an indie developer is nowadays, these game companies, EA, Activision, Atari, etc., 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 down the line, could have once upon a time been, been considered an indie developer in, compa- in comparison to what we consider an indie developer today. Indie is destroying AAA. I mean, absolutely, hands over foot, just ripping it apart. Because now you have all these indie titles that are starting to go to Kickstarter, starting to go to uh, Indiegogo, and all these other, um, what are they called? Crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing sites, thank you. And they're starting to put their games out, and they're saying, and us as gamers, us as nerds, us as geeks, whatever you want to call us, we now have a voice. Now, this voice is in terms of money, and what it does is we get to go, and now we are able to say, yes, we want this game to come out, or no, we don't want this game to come out, and the way that we get to do that nowadays is we get to shove money at these games. So we now are, like right now I'm looking at Camelot, I have Camelot Unchained open up where they're asking, I thought they ran a successful Kickstarter, but I guess I'm wrong, Dan? I did, Kickstarter guy. I didn't see anything about Camelot Unchained on Kickstarter. Now, I could be wrong, but I think Camelot Unchained, Unchained is supposed to be the sequel to Dark Age of Camelot. Can anybody confirm that one for me? Uh, it'd probably be safe to say spiritual in the very least. I wouldn't say right, the direct. Right, not sequel, but it, it's from the original developers who created Dark Age of Camelot. Not Mythic. Right. I think the, I think the lead. These mystery, guys broke off and made their own studio from what I read. Right. Yeah, they're in Fairfax, Virginia. So, if I'm uh, correct, I was wrong. They did do a successful Kickstarter at over one million. So, okay. So this is a secondary Kickstarter that they have going on to continue funding on the game. All right. So there they are. I'll, I'll, we'll get to that later. But my point is, obviously, the world wants Camelot Unchained to come out. And by world, I mean us as gamers, us as nerds, us as geeks. People who played Camelot or Dark Age of Camelot want Camelot Unchained to be released. And by saying, yes, here's our five, or here's a million dollars, this is what we want to happen. Here's a successful, you know, a successful Kickstarter. You know, now we're looking at an indie developer creating an MMO. Same thing, same thing with, uh, 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 oh God, Embers of Karis. Yep. We want that game to come out. Oh, yeah. That's the game we want. Because we, as the people, funded that game. Now, I might not have put money in, or these guys might not have put money in, but that doesn't mean that we don't want it. That means that there are enough people out in the world that actually do want this game to happen. Where, now you're starting to see you know, AAA titles try to do the same thing, but they already have funding. So even if they get a remote, let's say they get up to like, 400000 in a $500,000 Kickstarter. They know that people want that game, so they're going to go and develop it anyway. Right? right. But now you see, now we're seeing more and more and more and more AAA studios hit with major, major layoffs. Number one, I mean, a lot of the social, social game companies are getting hit. You know, Zenga took a huge hit this year. They shut down a couple of offices out here in Baltimore. They shut down, I believe, the one up uh, in Seattle. And I don't know if they're... I think they have one in California somewhere. I don't think that one closed, though. But the point is, you know, the bigger companies are starting to fall because the smaller companies are coming out and asking us what we want in a game. Unlike what, you know, EA. EA is not going to come and say, how do you guys want... How or they didn't come to us and say, "How do you guys want Star Wars: The Old Republic to be done?" You know, they created the game how they saw fit and hoped that the investors were giving them enough money. So, my little rant here is: these companies, you know, the, these large companies are done. 
They're, they are. We're going to see more and more and more and more of these companies dwindling down. More and more shutdowns. You're going to see EA or AAA titles fall. You're going to see. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are going to be games out there that are AAA titles that are still going to be successful. Battlefield 4, I think, is going to be a successful game. Uh, the twelve-year-olds are still going to be running to the store to pick up Call of Duty. Uh, they're going to, you know, the twelve-year-olds are going to be still running to the store to pick up Assassin's Creed because now that is a every year title, um, and it's just yep. just how it is. You know, you're not going to get away from that. Assassin's Creed is going to get shittier and shittier and shittier every year. Call of Duty is is going to be the same game released every year with a new skin or a new gun or a new way that something works, but nothing innovative is going to come out of these games. It's going to be the same shit over and over and over again. And uh, those titles are going to be the ones that are going to be successful. Now, you guys hear me, you hear us put friggin' Battlefield up on a pedestal all the time. And we're going to continue to do it as long as that game continues to be as innovative as, as it has been. With it, you know, constantly really releasing new things. I mean, we've got five expansions and every expansion had something new to the game. You know, not necess- maybe not necessarily innovative but new you know to the game made it different drug it on i mean it, it's a first person shooter so you get your general you know crouch prone position fire the gun get up from prone position run reload you know that kind of thing drop med packs drop ammo packs that that's normal you know that's that's a that's a freaking first person shooter there are games that are going to do that but they're going to, and they're going to be successful. The problem is now we have all these titles, all these game companies that are out there, and I'm going to use uh, Vigil, which was Darksiders, correct? Did I get that company right? Ah, uh, yeah. I, I yeah. effed it up last time I talked about it. Vigil, who was bought up by THQ, uh, it became a THQ asset. It released the Darksiders series, which were fantastic games, and what happened to it? It got shut down, it tumbled, it fell when THQ fell. And that's to, that to me sucks. Big fat donkey D. But you guys you guys agree with me? What do, what do you guys say? I, can't, I agree. I can't disagree with anything you said. Honestly, it makes perfect sense. And I, I think you're right when you say the indie developers are, are now taking over or, or are soon going to be taking over the mainstream uh, focus. And, and right, they should. It should be about the games, not about, um, not about a corporation or, or the, the money a corporation can amass. To make a simple comparison, game studios back 10 years ago are what indie studios now, just like 80s rock is what country is now. What? <laughs> what? I, you ever I, listen to modern country? It's eighties rock. No, it's not. Eighties yes, rock is. was hair metal and awesome. It's the same damn music. No, same it's instruments. Not. Same damn music. No. Are you not. hold hold on a second? Back up. Did you just talk smack about hair metal? Yeah, he did. Get out, road. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that your seventeen year old brain can't comprehend the awesomeness <laughs> that was Van oh, Halen. All I right. never said that I didn't like Van Halen. I'm just saying. That's hair what metal. country music's trying to be now is 80s rock. <laughs> you get over it. <laughs> moving on. Anyway, moving on. So, what do we got next? All right, next oh, up. Are we getting to politi- politics? Politics. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit in here because it actually affects us. Uh, New Jersey Task Force demands tighter regulations on video or on violent video games. Oh, uh-huh. is, this the one, is this the one with the... Uh, uh, what is it? Where they um, limiting the games that are in arcades to they the no arcade in in New Jersey is allowed to have a rated M game in it. Uh, I don't think it's that one, or that oh. that could have just been another point. This might this might go along with that, but okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it might go along with that. But basically, yeah. you know, from what I'm seeing, a lot of this is kind of the common sense crap, but they're pushing it harder. They're trying to get people to look more at the M and uh, adult rated games, which some of the stuff is kind of redundant. I mean, they need to 
more conspicuously display the ESRB ratings. Um, it's pretty big on the box. It's pretty damn big on the box anyway. <laughs> so the entire back side, in fact, no, the entire front side needs to be the ESRB rating. We'll have a little itty bitty image, and that's what you know the game. That's how you know what the game is. Yeah, it, it's a big rating, little game cover. Um, you know, it's stupid stuff like that. Now they're, you know, restrict making, they want to put in age restrictions on who can buy what games. You have Those to are have already IT. in place. <laughs> uh, age restrictions, kind of. There's no you, actual legal precedence for it yet. No, in, Pe in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, there it is. You can't. Yeah, okay, well then your state's stupid. So, there you go. <laughs> um, okay. Like, I can, I can go buy a rated M game and give it to my brother. But yeah, my right. brother, my brother cannot walk into a store and buy a rated M game. The way that they want to take this, though, is it's not going too far. Say the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rate this along with like alcohol and cigarettes. Where if you have a violent video game that's rated for M seventeen plus, and you're sixteen years old, that's contraband. What? Yeah, that, that's uh. the way they're going to start pushing this. If they get this to go through, who says that that won't be the next step? Next thing you know, violent video games will be twenty one and older. So you'll be sitting there drinking your whiskey while playing a violent video game. That's and then they'll sad. say that since you're drinking whiskey and playing a violent video game, that you're going to become an abusive parent, and then they're going to take away all violent video games in general. It's a slippery slope. Right down. Conspiracy hat off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But anyway, if you're in New Jersey... Oh, Gen General said he gets carded for rated M games. Well, it... Wisconsin. I mean, I'm sorry. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> uh, Pennsylvania, you, you get carded all the time. You have to be 18 or older to pick up M-rated games. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. and Wal and Walmart as a company. Card. Yeah, Walmart as a company. That's a company policy, though. Yeah, that's that's fine. Policy. It's company policy. We don't need the government involved in every aspect of our life. But taking no, it out, I, away I from think that, that that's some bullshit to me. It, it is. So if you're in the state of New Jersey or any other state that they're trying to push this crap in, it's time for you to get a hold of your local and state representatives and actually do something. There are plenty of groups out there that are willing to help you with this. There are plenty of groups out there looking for support so that they can push against these things. But unless people actually step up and help them or say something, nothing's going to change and the government's going to tell you what you can do with your life. Moving on. <laughs> so anyway, so... so, so uh, kind of touching on what you were talking about, there is a uh, there's legislation. I don't know if it's been passed or not, but in, in New Jersey, the uh, some woman. Uh, uh, I'm not saying it, you know it's a bad thing, but she's just a uh, just a, a political figure in in New Jersey. And what they're trying to do is she's she's trying to shut down. Um, she's trying to shut down the ability. For arcades, which there aren't many left, to have to not be able to have M-rated games, so they, they, she doesn't want. Oh, oh, I know what story. We, I think we actually already covered this story. What it was um, is any of those ones that have the guns, like the actual guns that you pick up and hold. They no, want no, to get no. rid of all no. of those. Too. It, was, it was actually it was actually M-rated games. This this is specific. So it's moved on. Yes. So it is specifically M-rated games. But the kicker, the kicker to this is, <laughs> no arcade, there is not one arcade cabinet in the world that is affected by ESRB. Yeah. So now they're going to want to regulate them. But, the, but they, I, the, I don't think the woman realizes that. Mm. She passed this, or they passed this law. And, <laughs> and there's like, and... And so everybody's nobody really got you know a attacked it because there are no M-rated games in any of the any of the arcades. They're just not there. I mean, there's games that should be rated M. Don't get me wrong, oh, yeah. but but they're, they're just not there. <laughs> I just think it's funny to me. Okay, moving on again. Nobody likes me. <laughs> oh, man, right. we got this broken up into uh, political now. We, so we do. bad news, political. Did we get the good news somewhere? Yeah, it's down on your bottom. All right. We're, we're of, course it's, it's, of course it's near the bottom. All right, All right let's push through this. So uh, the Office of Fair Trading, which is an EU thing, and it sucks that Tom's not here so he can comment on it, or can't, uh, ready to take enforcement action, quote-unquote, against the unlawful IAPs, which uh, 
think of all your mobile games that have the, you know, $3 for energy or, you know, stuff like that. Stupid things that we've commented yeah. about before. Um, there was a recent study, or a, a recent story we actually already talked about um, in a previous episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, About yeah. how this kid spent, like, thousands of euros or pounds or something or whatever that funny money is they use it with Seven that. grand? Yeah, like, seven grand worth and on some stupid, like, iPhone game. Well... The Office of Fair Trade is looking into this, and apparently there's something about it that makes it unlawful. I don't really remember what it was, because the story's from two weeks ago. But I think this is something they should do something about, because we shouldn't have kids out there. We yeah, shouldn't and, have and, kids and their out there. their excuse is, oh, it's clearly yeah. stated in the NDA, or in the e uh, EULA with the game. No one reads those things. <laughs> but as I could hear I could hear someone about to say it too was <clears throat> we shouldn't really so much regulate that. We should regulate his fucking parents who didn't per use parental controls and gave him access to something like that that could run their credit cards up. Yep, well there's Lotus of saying that right now. Where wow, where were his parents? Yeah. But, well, yeah, it's true. I think yeah. uh, the person JJ was trying to preempt on that one though was me. Yeah. I think the parents should have to pay. I think the parents should have to pay that bill as part of a stupidity tax. Maybe next time, watch your kid better and learn how to parent. <laughs> and I say this as somebody who's a parent. Hmm. I, I I would. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not touching the parenting thing yet. My kid's not even going to be not even born. But yeah. Um, Tune in next episode, probably possibly the one after for uh, an update on that one. Uh -huh. Yeah. So oh, we but, have, um, okay. we, not us, the UK also has the thing where if you sell a product online, it has to be able to be returned. Uh, by product, I mean like a game. So if like you're yeah. using Steam, they have to be able to exchange it or sell it. And I have not heard anything about this yet. So I, I would love, love to see that. Yes, yes, Dave, you do. UK, UK Belch is in the uh, chat with us again. Um, there is. There is, and and a lot of you guys, I don't. A lot of the UK people, I don't think even realized that it was passed. But like, it was, this was something that was exciting for me because I thought then maybe Steam would possibly come up with an idea on how to sell games. You know, they they could do a whole GameStop kind of deal with it where. I might buy a game for fifty bucks today and say, "Okay, well, you know, in a month I, I beat it or I don't want to play it anymore. Why keep it in my? Why keep it in my in my uh, inventory of Steam games when I could, you know, maybe sell it, get a little Steam credit? You know, I would love that. I would I would love to sell my Steam games for Steam credit. Oh, I would love it. I too. would love it. I would absolutely love it. You know, it's like then Steam could get a little off the top and you know, done and done. It's just like so trading games in Steam. On that though, didn't Steam like find a workaround for that? They have in their EULA that states that no game can be sold once purchased. But I don't think anybody's tried to fight that yet, because it's it's a law versus an EULA. So even if somebody agrees to it, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't. It has no. It doesn't hold up anywhere. Is what I guess is where you could say because. The law is, the law states that if somebody purchases something online, and we're talking anything from Adobe to Microsoft products to... Uh, a porn website a membership. A, a porn website membership. <laughs> anything purchased online that as a digital good can be sold, you know, to somebody else. So that even goes... And what, what gets me is I think this is why Microsoft did a little work around with their system. Now if you go and you purchase Office, that Office can be installed on one computer and it's pretty much tied to that computer's MAC address. So now you can install it on one computer and then move it to another. So, you know, I, I don't know how they're handling it, but somebody needs to handle it. But, uh, all right, let's move on. All right, next story. Rhode Island lawmakers consider defaulting on 3.8 Studios in debt. That's, that's pretty much it. So Rhode Island lawmakers considering defaulting on 3.8 Studios debt. Somebody else is trying to fire up 3.8 Studios again. Yes, or they are. A hoax? And uh, I hope, you know, in light of my recent game purchase, 
that if they do get 3.8 Studios going up again, that they continue to make a sequel or some kind of new game with the same quality of their previous game. Yeah, uh, I think it's... I've I been saying that since moving, I've played the game. I think they're actually moving the studio... This is all, you know, hearsay and rumor that I've heard. Um, I believe they're moving the studio down into Delaware, which would floor me, because that's where the LLC is for. So I think they're going to actually move it to Delaware and have people move down there, possibly. Possibly. This is all possible and hearsay. So if that happens, oh my god, I might actually be able to work for a video game company. <laughs> that would be amazing. No, See, Sam, what you need to do is you need to grab your family... Once, once the little one comes, you need to go move over to the UK and work on Embers of Karis. Yep. Dave, I'll be over in a little bit. <laughs> 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 All right. Get that studio fired up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep moving right along. Ubisoft dis uh, disables Uplay download service after exploits allow free game downloads. Um, this is kind of an old article at this point. Basically, something went wrong with Uplay, as uh, you might have guessed. Uh, one of the funny things that actually came out of this is some people were able to get a sneak peek at Far Cry 3's Blood Dragon uh, DLC, which was originally shown as a uh, April Fool's joke and then turned out to not actually be a joke. Um, which, I guess, is some kind of like retro shooter, crazy dragons flying anywhere, laser blo uh, fly, you know, flying every which way. I don't really know. All the screenshots I've looked at it looked like talking complete about? sanity. Do you even know what you're talking about on this one? It's complete gibberish. Well, you know, my keyboard just crapped out on me again, by the way. I was typing, to, I was typing to Dave that uh, the offer's already on the table. He knows what I'm talking about. All right, go ahead. <laughs> do you know what you're talking about? Because I don't. I do, yeah. And you do know what we're talking about because we've discussed this already. Yes, we have. Go ahead. So, uh, anyway, just, you know, some exploits went through this. Uh, actually, speaking of exploits with uh, certain studios... Um, Razor, did you see Razor. that? Yes. Oh my god. Uh, for those that don't know and don't bother trying this, Razor had some kind of uh, screwed up exploit promo code that nobody knew about until I think it was Polygon um, game site actually informed them of it. Yes. If you typed in the promo code 1234, which, really? Uh, you <laughs> they got 90% they, yeah, they off the They were testing the system. Yeah, yeah. They were testing the system. There you go. So you got 90% off uh, this, the price of whatever product you're trying to buy. Yep. Um, the cool thing that Razer is doing is they're actually honoring all the people who uh, made purchases except the people who bought in bulk, in which case they get the choice of one item that they tried to purchase. Yeah. I, lo I loved Razer's line for this whole statement, and this was only in the UK, by the way. Um, <clears throat> that's true. And I, loved the, I loved Razer's line was... Um, even though this is going to hurt us and we're going to lose money because we're still a quote unquote small company. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> small. amazing company. <laughs> no, yeah, I they're they're that. a small company that only sells you know three thousand dollar computer peripherals. That's uh, yeah. small. Yeah, small company. Uh, Sponsors. No. Uh, Razer <laughs> Razer is garbage. You you want a new mouse? You want you want a new keyboard? Go to Logitech because their new stuff is amazing. I think just uh, to tick you off, I'm, I'm sorry. Get the series from now on. I've I've have <laughs> right, using right now both a Razer mouse and a Razer keyboard that I got before I joined Torocast, and they are still working perfectly to this day. Oh yeah. Well, I got that a being said, I, I got, got a, a dead knock that I bought after Bolton. PAX. Yeah, well, my, well, I'm sorry, Sam, that you keep eating cheese pizza and drippy beer and and touch yourself while <laughs> I, using your mouse at the, the same only, time the and don't know how to take care of my your, my gaming gear. The only thing that happens around that is I might have a drink next to me. The thing is, if some other company came out with a 12 button on the thumb pad mouse, I would buy it. But unfortunately, Razer has the only one, and it's the mouse I'm used to. So except, I'm using except, JJ, for the Logitech G600, which has a modifier button built onto the mouse, which you can also have, has a, also which has. What's it called? The G, the G what? 600. Also has a uh, button to, one, change the speed of the mouse, and two, to change profiles on the fly in mm. the mouse, which you can set up up to three profiles 
per mouse. I don't Thank care you. about switching the profiles, but if Logitech's got one that's got the 12 keys, then I'm probably going to look into it once my Razer starts to go down in quality. But right now, my Razer works perfect. But and, you can change the colors. It can and change colors another point I don't for... give a shit about changing the guy. Actually, I have the Naga Epic, so mine can change colors. But does it have a modifier button on it? Oh my god! You and know, another... speaking of spilling stuff on you know keyboards oh, and all that, uh, if oh, I wait, spill no. something on my Steel Series Shift keyboard, I just pull the key set out, dump it out, stick it back in, continues working. Nope, I can't. Stuff. I can't actually buy the. Uh, I can't use the G six hundred because for some reason they thought it was a cool idea to put mouse four and five right between the two keys, and I don't like that. Mouse four and five. Yeah, your four and five buttons right there below the uh, mouse wheel, and I hate that. They don't. They don't do any. The the one is the speed, and the other is the profile change. Oh, they don't have mouse four and five. Then I don't want it. Mouse four and five. What are you fucking talking about? I have okay. So on my Naga right now, yes. I have mouse one and mouse two, which is left click, right click, the wheel, which is I push down. Yes. I have mouse four and five, which is two extra buttons right up by my index finger where I click. Yes, that's that's on there as well. I'm not seeing it on here. Oh my god! Do I have to get a picture of my? I'm looking at the, I'm looking at Google right now. I'm seeing no god, extra buttons. Right. Oh god! I, I love Anyways. the arguments. I love the arguments we get we oh, get into. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're forward and back. They use the mouse wheel for the forward and back. Okay, so that's what I and then so but I, in games I use those. Those are like my auto run, and I use them for dodge and like Guild Wars two and stuff like that. And then I use my twelve buttons on the side. So I don't like that that they are missing those two buttons. They're, they're there in terms of your mouse wheel. Well, and, I don't. And the, Click the your other mouse point, wheel forward and back. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't the, want that. The other point for, for Razer, at least for me, is they're the only company that makes left-handed peripherals. The only company. Um, Logitech is also working on their G600 to be left-handed. I'm sure they are, but right now, the only company that has one on the market is Razer. You're insane. Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Now that we've gone on that tangent. The ultimate nerd showdown. <laughs> Next thing we're going right. to talk about is what's better, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars, by the way. Uh, that'll be unanimous on the show. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> nobody can disagree with you here. Oh, okay. World of Tanks user information may have been compromised. And by may dun, have dun, been compromised, dun. has been compromised. Let's just put that out there. So, uh, who is Wargaming or, yeah, Wargaming. Um, they're giving away 300 gold to all the people who have to change their passwords, blah, 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 so on and so forth. What does 300 gold get you in the game? Uh, I don't know. Do I, we'll do move on, but General down there tanks? can tell us because I know he plays. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, moving on. If he tells us something, we'll update. Final THQ auction raise, 6 to 7 million. Details expected Monday afternoon, so tomorrow afternoon sometime. I want to know who bought Darksiders, but I think it's going to be Crytek. General, uh, I'm going general, by the, general, by the way, says 300 gold to get you just about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to change your passwords, and you get almost nothing. Yep. Hang on. <laughs> you should change your passwords every three months. That's, yeah, that's their theory. So anyway, um, we don't have any details on who bought what. What we do have, moving on to the next story, uh, details on who did not get what they are aiming for. Oh, um, a while ago, the Homeworld IP was up for on Indiegogo so that people could crowdfund and your mic's going insane. Mine is? Yes. What's it doing? Oh my god, dude, it's like a hurricane going yeah, through your okay. house that right now? Problems with show. No, I'm serious, that's what it sounds like, dude. It sounds like you're in a windstorm. Yep. Alright. Did, did it stop? Yeah, Sorry. much better. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I, I think I think my mixer is about to die, which is not good because that's a five hundred dollar drop. So, go oh ahead. gosh. Ooh. All right, uh, let's try to power through this real quick. Um, go on with what I was saying. Crowdfunders were trying to uh, get a hold of the Homeworld IP for Indiegogo, and they got outbid. That's the only solid information we really have as far as the THQ auctions go. So we know they did not get it. So right. we'll find out sometime in the next few weeks who did get it. Uh, moving on. EA is consumerist worst company in America. Again. We knew that. Did we talk yeah. about that already? We did not. We talked, we talked about, about how they won worst company. Oh. We did not talk about how they got it again. They, well, we knew that. They're the shittiest company in the world. They got, Two they years got, running. 
They got the Poo Poo Award. And they got the Golden Poo Award. And yet you guys still give them money for Battlefield 3. You have no one else to blame but yourself. Uh, but see, Battlefield is a good I don't game, care. damn it! I don't it. care, but you're supporting them. If you're going to call them trash, stop supporting them. I, I support DICE, not EA. Thank you. You're still yep, supporting on. EA. Uh, I hate Microsoft, but I'm using Windows. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, then you're part of the problem. Yes, I am, and I'm proud of it. I'm yeah. American. That's what we do. Uh, America. Notch, only behind Egypt president in the Time 100 poll. Most influential people, blah, blah, blah. So, Notch got second. Okay. Years-long cyber attack on online gaming companies uncovered. That's ironic that he got number two because Minecraft is shit. Oh. No. <laughs> Yet it makes so much money. So, shit I sells. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, Call of Duty makes money. <laughs> yeah, well, good point. Okay, he's right there. So uh, a lot of companies around the world uh, have, I can't even, who was it? Some cyber espionage company, was it? Simitech, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, it was shown that over 30 gaming companies worldwide have actually been under cyber attack by, can you guess who? Chinese. Those gold farmers actually are harming the gaming industry. Fact. And it's been revealed. Uh, it there's awesome. a lot... Do what? I thought, I thought it was some crew, group in Russia. Uh, story I read said China. Hmm. So Interesting. It may be based in China. Of course, they could have moved to Russia. It's not like it's more than a hop, skip, and a jump away. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So anyway, uh, it's a big story. We're running short on time. So if you want to hear more information about this, we'll link the story in the show notes. Moving on, next subject. Ooh, yeah, Android console. Oh, yeah. It's up 10,000 develop partner, uh, development partners worldwide. And as one person said in the comments, what does a development partner mean? That yeah. could just mean some guy with my skill level, none. Which would mean hey. they have ten thousand, nothing. Do you so, guys remember? Do you guys remember like the old Sega Genesis games? Like when you would like start up the game, it'd be like Sega. They yeah. need to hire Sam, and he need to record some going Ouya for every Ouya game that turns on. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I appreciate that. while Good Ouya job. has caught a lot of flack from uh, most of the hosts on this show the last couple of weeks, I'm hoping that they will actually pull out and be a half-decent system. You know what Ouya is going to be good for? Year, this is crap. Ouya is only going to be good for, and here it comes, you ready? Emulators. Done. Ouya is going to be good. Ouya is going to be good for grandmas who want to buy their grandkids video games, but they don't oh know anything and they don't want to spend all that money. I've heard this one already. You know what Ouya reminds uh, me of? It reminds me of like when you go to like to the dollar store and they've got like that twenty dollar Wii console <laughs> on their shelf. That's what this Ouya reminds me of. Oh, that's so fucked up. It's a cheap plastic <laughs> knockoff. Uh, so uh, that right. point I was just trying to make, they just proved it. Moving on. Uh, for anyone that was watching the Beth blog or watching Bethesda's recent news, uh, you might have seen the two kind of teaser trailers they released. Was it last weekend or earlier throughout the week? Earlier, earlier in the week. Okay, so actually they released it right after the the, uh, the bombing attack. Oh yes, that's right. Um, so anyway, the uh, the game they revealed ended up being called Evil Within. Which uh, is, I think, being directed by Shinji Mikami, the original creator of Resident Evil. Yes. Um, so it's supposed to be a horror survival game, taking it back to, uh, dude. I watched. I've looked at some of the screenshots, and I watched that you know live action release trailer they made. Which this was is going to be a screwed up game. You know what? You know what bugs me though, because I think it's going to be dark all over the place. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I, one thing that I liked about the horror, you know, the, the, what are they called, survival horror games yeah. that, that were out, was they didn't have to be dark to scare the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Like, when right. when you were playing Resident Evil, you were in some well-lit rooms, and you were still scared. In fact, I mentioned this on a, on a previous episode, but when you were walking down the hallway, and the liquor crosses the screen, it scared the crap out of me. I didn't want to go down the hallway because I knew it was going to be on the other side, even though it wasn't. But the point is, it was still scary as shit. Well, I think we're really going to have to uh, take a look at what's 
going to come out here probably in the near future. I'm, I imagine we'll probably get a lot more details within the next couple of weeks. But uh, that's really the amount of information we have. And is id Tech Five? Is that the engine they're using? I ID. ID. Okay. The ID Tech that, Five. It, the guys that originally made uh, you know the the engine for Quake and um, oh okay Doom that stuff. So we have the engine. We have what kind of game it's going to be. A couple screenshots, live action trailer, and as far as story bits or anything else like that, nada. So tune in next time for more information. Hey, hey! I just came up. I just came up with an amazing joke. What's the hardest part about owning an Ouya? What's What's that? Admitting to your parents that you're gay. Wow. <laughs> really? I'm glad. You, I'm glad you really want to work at Forsaken Studios with Dave. <laughs> I'm kidding. God. It's ringing the soundboard, but I'm. It's, it's just a, uh, it, unfortunately, I'm actually ripping off another joke about what's the hardest part about rollerblading, etc. But, so, there you go. Um, Alright, moving on. Disabled LOL player gets a rare pen of kill without the use of his hands. I watched awesome. this. I watched this video, and, like, I'd have been the guy, because he's got, uh, I guess he's using a pen to hit the keyboard. Yep. Is that what it was? Okay. Yep. He, so, he's got some uh, foot presses for the actual attack buttons. Yeah. And then for his movement and all that, he's using the uh, pen to type, to talk, everything else like that, too. <laughs> like, it's amazing. <laughs> I just thrown the pen, like, kicked myself back in the chair, started screaming, and he just kept, like, the straight face. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, oh, wow, I got my first pen to kill ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Moving on. I need well, to get that on my stream. It's like... Um... Well, it's like the friend I grew up with who plays Call of Duty professionally, and he's paralyzed from the neck down. It's hilarious watching people like playing and seeing this one guy just getting destroyed by this nomad, and then they get up and they go to shake hands with the winning team, and they look at this guy in this wheelchair, and they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm nomad. They're like, you're the one that's got top kills? <laughs> you like get offended. But it's Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, go ahead, bro. All right, so uh, I think we actually talked about you know games we wish would come out last uh, episode, maybe episode before, episode before. Yeah. Um, going back to that, StarCraft Ghost might actually be released one day. Suggest a uh, Blizzard designer. So it's just in water is wet. Blizzard announces something with no apparent timeline. Exactly. <laughs> but they they said that it's not off the table. It's something that would never happen. So you know they're just getting our hopes up. Yeah, but I like it. I want the I want the game to come out, man. I want to see it. I don't. I really don't care. <sighs> hey, <laughs> buzzkill. Yep. Fine, fine. Let's move on to the next story. Zelda: a Link to the Past sequel headed to 3DS, and Earthbound's coming to the Wii U. I don't care about Earthbound, but I, I like the idea of Earthbound's a Link to the Past awesome. suck. sequel coming out. I, I like that idea. I uh, see. I looked at um, the picture they've got for the uh, new Link to the Past sequel, yep. whatever it's called. Yep. I think it looks terrible. I think they need to go back to <sighs> the Super Nintendo graphics. This 3D graphic crap sucks. Link to the Past was on the NES, I believe. Super Nintendo. Oh, man. See, now... now Link to the Past know. was Super Nintendo. Trust me. I'm yeah, just... You're right. Sorry. That was my fault. Because uh, Grail Online was nerd. based off of stealing all the graphics and designs from... Uh... Oh, God. Is this what the... Oh... It looks oh, awful, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember. It. Okay. It looks awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to old Super Nintendo graphics, release the freaking game. Thank you. Goodbye. Yep. Oh, my. <sighs> it almost right. looks like it reminds me of um, uh, Animal Crossing. Yes. That is, <laughs> the way the that graphics. Is a great the way, example. The way the graphics look in this game. It really looks like it looks like I should be planting trees and paying Tom Nook. Please don't beat me, Mr. Nook. Here's some more rupees. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. JJ, you ready? Uh, give me, get, let me take a drink here real quick. Take a drink. All righty. We have got our video game releases for the week of April 21st, 2013. Lego City Undercover, The Chase Begins for the 3DS. Riptide, or Riptide, the expansion for Dead Island, comes out for the Xbox 360, PC, PS3, 
Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Don't Starve is officially released for the PC. Woo, Tom- go buy it. <clears throat> Thomas was alone for the PlayStation 3 and PSNV, or the PlayStation uh, Vita. That, by the way, is a... Um, I think that's the puzzle game that's already out on PC. Um, really cool narrative kind of game, so uh, it's really creepy. Uh, Star Trek, the video game for the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Black Rock Shooter, the game for the PSP. Poker Night, which is Poker Night at the Inventory 2, the sequel, comes out this week. Uh, it's going to have Gladys and uh, Claptrap and a bunch of other people in it, so it's good stuff. Tell Guilty. Tell. Guilty Gear XX Core Plus R for the PlayStation Vita. Draw Slasher for the PlayStation Vita. Fire Pro Wrestling Returns for the PlayStation 3. Excite Bike for the Wii U. Monaco for the PC and Xbox Live. Uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown for the Macintosh. Elite Edition. Yeah. Can I just awesome. say I'm, re- I'm really sad that uh, Injustice didn't come out for the PC? Yes, you can. Because that was really sad. You know what is coming out for the PC? Hmm. Deadpool. I thought it was canceled. No. I thought the I thought they're like they got layoffs and stuff like that. Yeah, they got layoffs, and the game's still coming out. The game's oh. done. As soon as the game finished, they fired everyone. Hmm. Because hmm. they suck. Are you sure you're just not in denial because you don't want to admit that maybe your your Deadpool may not come out? No, I'm pretty certain it's coming out because they just put the release date out this week. It's June 25th. That's okay. Deadpool's not a Deadpool's not a really good character anyway. Yeah. What? Come other, other on! People, other people deserve video games more than Deadpool. Okay, I can give you that. I get, I can agree with that. No, no, Deadpool. Oh, like who? Superman? Oh man, he's getting Dead- another movie. It's Dead- gonna fail too. Okay. Here, here's how. Here's how crappy Deadpool is. Squirrel Girl is better than Deadpool. No. Fired. I'm just we've, purposely, we've been over I'm just this purposely already. antagonizing Rogue. We've that's been all over I'm this doing. already. I remember <laughs> that's the all I'm argument doing. already. That's all I'm doing is just antagonizing Deadpool. I don't believe it. Deadpool's my favorite. Like, I watch Blade Trinity just pointing at it going, See, Ryan Reynolds, that was Deadpool. Not whatever crap was in Wolverine Origins or whatever the heck crap that was. <sighs> oh. All right, all I right. want to address two things from the chat box first. Yeah. First general wants to make the point that Monster Hunter is coming out for PC in China. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, it's true. It is true, and it's going to be it on is. the Crytek 3 engine on top of that. So It looks amazing, by the way. Fuck China, by the way. Just, just saying. And uh, Lotus wants to make the point that Cable is better than Deadpool. Lotus is also a pot smoker. Just saying. <laughs> oh, and French-Canadian. Let's not leave that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, site content. Did we have any, we had uh, a couple things to up on the site this week, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we actually. I think might have an article going up today. Also, I, I can't uh, actually do anything because my keyboard crapped out on me. Thanks, keyboard. I think Everybody. Goosey's throwing something up today. Yeah, I oh. think he's doing a Bioshock Infinite review on the site today. Okay, cool. Um, so, and as any one of us that have played the game already will tell you, the game is amazing. Gotcha. All right, uh, where did my notes go? So look for that coming up. Also, we're going to have a kind of like a joint review for Don't Starve coming up as well. Uh, that game releases on the 23rd, which is Tuesday, and the end game content is being added. I don't mm. know if that's secret information or not that I shouldn't talk about, but... Uh, <laughs> Too late. I did it. I did anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Tomorrow cast new episode coming up today. Tiso cast new episode coming up on. Uh, no, sorry. Tomorrow cast a new episode will be released tomorrow. Yep. Tiso cast episode will be released on Wednesday. What's that movie will be recorded today and released to Tuesday, right? I got I to remember the days. Derailed Gamers is finally coming back, and they will be recording. There or they should have episodes recorded already, and they will release on uh, next next Monday. So check that out. Uh, if you want to learn more information about this podcast and the other podcasts that we do, check us out, www.twoncamera.com, uh, twitter.com slash twoncamera, facebook.com slash twoncamera, youtube.com slash e, uh, twoncamera, E-N-T. Rate, hate, and subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. Road, you got those ready? Do what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five-star reviews from uh, Torin Eloan. XX, I hate you, XX, and Dark Wolf. Okay. 
Yeah. Do they have anything to say? To say? <laughs> sure, on iTunes. But that's the last one. I saved the names, man. I didn't save anything else. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I just wanted to give a thanks. I don't even... <laughs> yes. Thanks, thanks for the reviews. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, I really hate subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher did that. Uh, still looking for interns, people who work with the site. You want to write, you want to do PR, you want to do marketing, whatever it is, let us know. Help us, help you, that kind of deal. We're definitely uh, looking to get some of that working with you guys. Ah, is that it? I think that wraps us up, right? I think we're good. So Rhodes got to run off and go do his third podcast of the day. Thanks for being a slave today, Road. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, third podcast and a spotlight. Yep. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for me and uh, these guys here, thank you for listening to the show. And to those of you joining us in chat, thank you for joining us in chat uh, and listening to the show live. We hope you guys like this new uh, way of us getting the show done. If you haven't checked us out live, you can find us at twitch.tv slash Uh We have live shows going up on on Sundays now for the Banhammer so far. Uh, more to come hopefully soon after some things around my house slow down a little bit. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, have yourself an awesome, safe week, and we will talk to you all next week. Peace out. Have a good weekend. Bye, everyone. That's it. Wrong show. I don't care. I do. I don't care. Maybe bring out the soundboard. Oh my god. <laughs> I, um. Alright, I'm going to stop, stop Twitch. Thanks for joining us, everybody on the live broadcast. We will talk to you guys all next week.